Hello and welcome back. Let's take a look at a very, very well known fast food restaurant, huge, huge chain in the US, Chipotle Mexican Grill. This is actually a restaurant that I personally like a lot. Fast food joint, pretty much. It's for the most part not really a restaurant, but uh, I do like a lot. And uh, I was uh, getting food from there quite a few times actually when I was living in the US. Unfortunately, where I am right now, it's not a big thing. Hopefully it's gonna come over because uh, I really like their burritos and uh, food generally speaking. But let's take a look at uh, what the company is about and what it's doing and whether it's a potentially interesting opportunity. It almost reached $2,000 uh, one year ago. It's about 80%, 18% less than where it used to be. But uh, as you can understand, being a, f a fast food company is generally speaking not affected that much by you know the market's uh, downtrend i mean there's always going to be some effect but uh, generally speaking it's doing well even in this environment right now and if we take it back to one year you can kind of see what has been happening with the company and the max though you will see it's pretty amazing because the uh, company used to be like 44 dollars here and right now is uh, 1600 so they are doing amazingly well very very successful restaurant a joint again <laughs> Let's take a look at the financials. Uh, the P ratio of the company is 70. That's pretty high, of course. It used to be a little bit higher, still sitting pretty high. What about the, pre the price to free cash flow ratio is uh, 53.8, also pointing to a ratio that is relatively high. The company has very few shares. Let's see here, 28 million. This is why the stock price is very high, but uh, they actually bought back a few uh, since last five years. Uh, so that's good. They're actually not uh, issuing more shares. Good thing to see even buying back a little bit. Free cash flow to total liabilities is about where I want it to be. If you see here, five is uh, sort of like the max for this uh, ratio here. Uh, well, be below five or five turns green, but that's uh, totally acceptable here, of course. And uh, all these values here pointing to a company that's increasing revenues, increasing net income. You see, it's also about the same, the same slope here. That's good to see as well. And the free cash for the five year free cash flow growth and the total equity. We will examine this in detail, of course. But it always pays to take a quick look at the key metrics and um, the debt to equity ratio the company has a little bit more debt that w than what we would like here but it has great return on equity here and so if they can utilize this debt and their assets to produce equity for the people for to produce uh, a, ret a return for the people then that's actually pretty good company is not paying any dividend yield right now i actually like that if you know me i'm not a huge fan of dividends they are a little bit inefficient for the most part tax inefficient uh, but a uh, high price to book ratio also worth uh, noting here is a little bit high again I don't pay too much attention to this one though because uh, I do like to judge a company's uh, price stock price based on what they're doing financially and not so much their book value it does help with some uh, companies though for instance banks where we, we would take that into consideration much more so we're gonna take a look at the income statement now and see what the company is actually doing in terms of numbers 4.4 to 7.5 this is in like about four or five years and uh, yeah the company is growing at a fairly steady pace here something that you like to see of course and what about um, their net income here also been growing not tremendously but still growing pretty much every year so the company is increasing their net uh, income bottom line their balance sheet uh, they remember they haven't printed any any more shares they haven't issued shares so their total equity is increasing um, i'd say efficiently with the net income of the company from 1.3 billion to 2.2 so that's pretty pretty nice and steady for a company like uh, chipotle you are not going to be noticing a lot of uh, growth uh, with this company it's a very very established chain uh, within the us um, you're if you're buying this one you are buying it for the long term um, cash flow pretty much that's going to be producing and that's something that I like, uh, as long as the price, the current price is uh, fair, which we will examine it later at our stock evaluation tool, of course, as we always do. And uh, the net cash provided by operating activities also increasing. Things are very looking very, very healthy for the company here. A little bit of investing going on, some purchases of investments, as you'll see, the usual capital expenditures. And uh, what about uh, the financing activities? Yeah, the company is actually uh, pretty much uh, repurchasing some stock, as we saw here, is the big factor. So they are buying back shares. Interesting. Uh, we want to see whether it's actually a good idea to do that or not. We will examine that. And they almost have like sort of a uh, little bit short of a billion here in terms of cash. Free cash flow also been increasing. So things are looking pretty neat 
for the company. So this is a company that, uh, based on the financials that I'm seeing here, I would definitely be interested in buying for sure. But I want to take a look at uh, whether the stock price is cheap or expensive, because that's what matters a lot when we're actually looking to get into an investment, to get in an investment. Because um, it may be an awesome company, but if we're getting it at a very expensive price, then it's not worth it and we should be jumping to something else. Let's take a look at the revenue growth here. The average, as you'll see, is 14.28%. We have to go with lower. We're going to go 7. Let's go 7, 9, and 11. And the net income margins over here are about 5.6%. So we're going to go 5, 4, 5, and 6. Makes a ton of sense. And the free cash flow margin is 130%. Uh, they did have an 80 here. So they do have free cash flow margins that are pretty good. So we're going to go 100, 110, and 120 here. And uh, the annual return that we're going to typically going to make is 13% over here. Uh, because we can get 10% uh, from an S&P 500 ETF. So we have more risk out of a single stock. We need to be making a little bit more. 13% is what I like to get. Calculate and uh, we'll see that we are getting a value that is much, much lower than the current price of the company. And you'll see that I used pretty, pretty neat, uh, pretty uh, not too super conservative revenue growth here, because uh, the company is is doing 14% uh, pretty much um, every year on average. And so even if I go, let's just say that I go 12, 13, and 14 here, I basically get to this level, and I hit calculate again, you will see that we are still much, much lower than what we want it to be. The current price of the stock is uh, much elevated here. And it, it would have to go down quite significantly for us, for, for us to make sense to purchase the stock uh, based on uh, the financials. And we kind of got a glimpse of that uh, when we took a look at the stock analysis chart and the, the key metrics here, which really help. And uh, they take us to about a 70 PE ratio and a 53.8 uh, uh, price to free cash flow ratio. And this is why uh, using this stock, the stock evaluation tool, we can kind of see the exact uh, value that it would make sense for us to buy because we don't want to be paying uh, 1600 for something that's probably worth around 300 or something of that sort. Again, based on what they are doing, if, they w if we want to be making money uh, in the next few years because otherwise we're buying at a very, very expensive price and we don't know what's going to be happening with the company. So yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about in terms of uh, Chipotle. I know that this is a company that a lot of people are looking at because it's an interesting one and a company that a lot of people love. You may have heard of the phrase that you should be buying companies that you understand, that you know how they operate and all that jazz. And that's true. But uh, it always pays to examine the financials and always, always take into consideration if the stock price is actually cheap or expensive because that matters a lot. Any investment has a price in which it becomes a good investment and a price in which it becomes a bad investment. And so right now buying Chipotle for 1600 in my eyes, it's, it would be a bad investment. So yeah, I would like this to drop massively before I, was, I would even think about uh, buying it. Tell me what you think about Chipotle. Leave a comment below and remember to like the video. That helps a lot. Also subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Very, very soon in the next few days, I'm going to letting you know, I'm going to be letting you know how you can access this tool and you want to be around for when that happens. Thank you for watching this one and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye-bye.